Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you the journey of how I got accepted into two of the most prestigious universities in China, which is Tsinghua University and Peking University, which are actually located right next to each other. So these two universities are renowned for their academic excellence and often referred to as the MIT or Harvard of China just due to its notoriously low acceptance rate. Um, so if you're interested in studying in China or simply curious about the application process, yeah, make sure to stick around till the end. So let's get started. So first off, I thought that I would yeah, show you guys the admission letter. So this is the one I received from Peking. Uh, it arrived, I think, late June. And inside this admissions notice has a admissions letter um, by Peking University. And it also has a piece of paper that just says all the stuff that I need to do in China. And also my visa, which I need to apply for as well. And then for Tsinghua's one, which was a bit nicer, um, it came in this red little package. Um, it had a nice purple folder, and inside the folder it had my admissions letter as well, with my student ID, which I need to hide, right over here. Um, your visa application, and also another Tsinghua certificate, I'm not too sure what this is. So I'll start off and talk a bit about the two universities. So Tsinghua University is located in Beijing and is often referred to as the MIT of China just due to its exceptional reputation in engineering and technology. The university consistently ranks among the top in the world. Um, the acceptance rate at Tsinghua is notoriously low, often hovering around less than 0.1% for local students and about 10% for international students like myself. Um, this means that out of every 100 applicants, only a handful make it through the, through the selection process. The competition is quite fierce and you have to prepare quite diligently to stand a chance to make it through. So Peking University, also located in Beijing, is often referred to as the Harvard of China, just renowned for its comprehensive uh, programs across various disciplines, including humanities, social sciences and natural sciences. Whilst it is slightly less competitive than Tsinghua, it still boasts a very low acceptance rate, usually around 0.15% for local students and around 15% for international students. So Peking's university has a very rich history and academic excellence, making a very top choice for many aspiring students. So both Tsinghua and Peking University are members of the prestigious C9 League, which comprise of China's top institutions. However, they do have very distinct differences in their focus and strengths. So Tsinghua is known for its emphasis on science, engineering and technology, and is a lot more hands-on and practical, whilst Peking University has a stronger focus on humanities, social sciences, and the arts with very more theoretical knowledge. Understanding the unique differences of each university is you know, quite crucial in making your decision about which one to apply for as well. So the application process for both universities can be quite demanding, but it's also a great opportunity to really showcase your potential and achievements. So here are the key steps that I took during the application process. So number one is research. Number two is my application. Number three is academic preparation. Number four is letters of recommendation. Number five is your personal statement. And number six is the summary list of items to submit. So number one, research. So um, I think it's quite integral to really thoroughly research the programs and majors offered by each university to find the one that really aligns with your academic interests and career goals. Uh, both Tsinghua and Peking University have a list of Chinese taught and English taught courses, which can be found on their website. For Chinese taught, taught courses, you will be required to complete a HSK examination, which stands for Han Yu, Sui Ping Kao Shi. And it's really just to determine your Chinese level and whether you have the capability to undertake Chinese taught courses. So for English courses, uh, if your first language is English, then there are no examinations required. So for myself, I ended up applying for a Juris Masters of Law at Tsinghua and Peking, which is taught in English. So number two is application. So it is very important to apply early as it's based on first come, first serve. So first round applications open around the 15th of October and close around the 15th of December. And then second round applications open around, I think the 1st of January till I think the 1st of March. So if you don't have a good chance of getting in, it's you know, very recommended to apply during the first round. Number three is academic preparation. As the acceptance rates are very low, um, I think it's very important to excel academically. So it's very important to focus on achieving you know, top grades and participate in extracurricular activities um, related to your field of interest. Um, both universities require international students to submit standby test scores, um, which may include SAT, ACT, and for myself, it was my academic transcript for my bachelor's degree. 
So for Peking University and Tsinghua University, they may also look at your professional work experience if you have any. Um, for myself, I almost had two years of professional work experience at a big four accounting firm, working as a consultant in the finance advisory division. So if you're applying for a master's degree, um, it's very important to submit a degree certificate and also a degree authentication, which you will be required to bring the original copy to, to China as well. So for the degree authentication, I think that um, you will need to submit it to the Chinese service center. And I think I found that to be quite difficult to navigate, just given that it wasn't very English friendly and it was mainly um, yeah, in Chinese the entire interface. So number four is your letters of recommendations. It's imperative to ask your employers or professors who can really attest to your academic abilities and characters to write um, yeah, two letters of, of recommendations. Um, here's an example of my academic letter that my professor wrote for me. Um, I think it's quite important to ask your professors or employers to write a letter of rec recommendation that really relates to your passion and ability to excel um, in your desired course. And number five is your personal statement. So I think the personal statement is one of the most crucial aspects of your application. So I spent quite a lot of time crafting a very compelling story about my academic journey and aspirations, highlighting why I wanted to study in China. And I guess here is an example of my personal statement. Um, I think it's very important to really tailor your personal statement by yourself and make it very personal. Um, this way it becomes very compelling as well. So number six is a summary list of items to submit. Um, you will be required to submit a number one personal statement, number one, your degree certificate and degree authentication, uh, number three, your academic transcript, um, number four, your HSK certificate if you are choosing to apply for Chinese taught courses, um, number five is two academic recommendation letters, number six, your passport, and number seven, your scholarship forms if you intend to apply for it. So after months of hard work and anticipation, in April, I received the news of being accepted to both universities. It was a moment of you know, joy. I know that you know, studying both at Peking or Tsinghua University will be an amazing experience. I know that there'll be countless of opportunities that these two universities will provide me. After careful consideration and discussion with my peers who have been both to Peking and Tsinghua University, I ended up deciding to go with Tsinghua University, mainly based on these two points. Number one is time. So a Juris Master of Law at Peking was two years, while I, whilst a Juris Master of Law at Tsinghua was one year. I felt that if I'm getting the same degree, I would be better off studying for one year at Tsinghua University, and upon getting the degree, look for work experience, which I believe is equally, if not more important, um, just given the practicality and nature of work experience. Uh, number two is core subjects. Uh, after careful analysis of each respective university's core subjects, I felt that Peking University had a lot of overlapping and dry subjects which I had already learnt in my undergraduate degree of law and I thought that would be a waste of time just to relearn these units in the context of China. On the other hand, Tsinghua University had a lot more electives which gave me, I guess, a choice to select units um, more tailored towards corporate and finance law which is more towards my interests. And also having discussed with peers that have attended each university, I think that one point that really stood out to me was that Peking was very traditional and theoretical, whilst Tsinghua was more transformative and practical, which I personally think is more beneficial to my career. So yeah, after careful consideration, I have decided to accept Tsinghua's offer. Um, if you're considering applying to Tsinghua or Peking University, remember that the journey is quite challenging and that with determination and preparation, you can definitely achieve your goals. So thanks for joining me today and if you have any questions or want to hear more from me about my experiences, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, yeah, this is my very first video, so don't forget to like and subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Come back. Okay. Achi, I hear.